Hi guys, Olive here, here today to do part two of my three-part nonfiction book haul. I asked you all at the end of the last part of this book haul to let me know in the comment section whether you wanted to see all the animals and nature books next, or if you wanted to see all the science books next. I tallied up all those votes and science was the winner, so in this part we are going to be looking at all the science books that I have acquired over the past few months. The first science book I picked up is by very popular nonfiction writer Mary Roach. This is her book Packing for Mars, The Curious Science of Life in the Void. I'm slowly making my way through all of Mary Roach's books. I read Stiff earlier this year and really enjoyed it, so I was so excited to see See this at a library book sale. This book is all about the complexities of what happened to the human body when you're in space. I am sure that this is going to be hysterically funny in Mary Roach's typical fashion. And then at a different library book sale, I go to a lot of different library book sales across my city. I was really surprised to find this tome. This is the Book of Science put out by the New York Times. This is a collection of 125 different articles from the New York Times that all spotlight different scientific breakthroughs, setbacks, and mysteries. I was really interested to pick this one up because it seemed like a great sampler to me. I could see myself reading an article in here becoming really interested in the topic and then going and seeking out other articles or better yet books on that exact same topic. And then I picked up a popular science nonfiction book called The Disappearing Spoon by Sam Keen. Sam Keen is one of those authors who I've been meaning to read forever. All of his books pretty much are on my TBR and yet I've not picked up any of them yet. They all sound so interesting, including this one, which is all about crazy tales surrounding the periodic table of the elements. This next one was sent to me as a gift from the Reddit Gifts book exchange, which I do every single year. I have done for years. This was a book off of my wish list that my Santa sent me. That is The Art of Naming by Michael Ohl. This book is all about what the author calls the joyful and creative act of assigning something a scientific name. And although to the untrained eye, it may seem that these names are kind of slapped on haphazardly, there are a specific set of rules. So this book is all about that process. Next is a book that I was long overdue to pick up. That is The World Without Us by Alan Wiseman. I first mentioned this book during Nonfiction November last year, and Nonfiction November is coming back for 2019. Just thought you should know. But I spoke about this book in a video I did about fiction and nonfiction matchups, or reading a fiction book alongside a nonfiction book to enhance your reading experience of both of those books. I recommended that you pair this book up up with Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel, since this is a book that discusses how nature would react should humanity disappear. I also picked up Lives in Ruins, Archaeologists, and the Seductive Lore of Human Rebel by Marilyn Johnson. I own another one of this author's books. It seems as though she really enjoys writing about very specific subcultures. She has a book all about librarians. She has another one all about obituary writers, which is the one that I own. And this one is all about archaeologists and the considerations of pulling artifacts out of the rubble. Somewhat surprisingly, I also picked up Storm in a Teacup, The Physics of Everyday Life by Helen Zazerski. I say this is surprising because I know I've mentioned it before on this channel, but I don't get physics. Not even a little. I dodged every single physics class I ever needed to take, like the plague. However, I do think attaining a very basic understanding of everyday physics will be really good for me, and this is a book all about that. It's about the physics of everyday life, so things like popcorn popping, coffee stains, and fridge magnets. This will suit me just fine. The next book I have to show you has a topic that absolutely blows my mind. That book is called The Universe in the Rearview Mirror, How Hidden Symmetry Shape Reality by Dave Goldberg. As much as entropy seems to dominate our known universe, there are a lot of naturally occurring symmetries, both ones that we can see and ones that we can't see, and this book uses science and math to explain those. The next book has a very poetic title. That book is called And Soon I Heard a Roaring Wind, A Natural History of Moving Air by Bill Strieber. This book is a science and history of wind, from the impacts of weather on our lives lives to wind-powered energy and beyond. From a book on wind to a book about a deadly lack of air, I also picked up Catching Breath, The Making and Unmaking of Tuberculosis by Catherine Lougheed. This book has a haunting cover, and it is all about the bacteria that causes TB and how it has evolved with our species up to the present day. And then I picked up a second book on tuberculosis. Where else on BookTube are you going to hear that sentence, I ask you? This is the weirdest channel. But anyway, that book is The Remedy by Thomas Goetz. In the late 19th century, a TB diagnosis was a death sentence. 
That is until 1890 when a provincial doctor claimed to have found a cure. But when writer Arthur Conan Doyle toured this man's facilities, he discovered that this man was either committing fraud or was just negligent, and he had to decide whether or not to out him for what he discovered. I never knew this was a thing. I am riveted. This next one has been on my TBR for far too long. I absolutely need to make it a priority. That book is The Emperor of All Maladies by Siddhartha Mukherjee. This is a giant giant biography of cancer. I just recently read an entire book on the immune system, so I think that this Pulitzer Prize winner is a very natural follow-up. I also bought Admissions Life as a Brain Surgeon by Henry Marsh. This one is a memoir, so I suppose I could have included it in the previous part of the haul when I talked about all the other memoirs that I've picked up, but I wanted to include it in the science section since it is written by a brain surgeon. In this book he discusses his life leading up to becoming a surgeon, then he talks about all the responsibilities he faced as a surgeon to reduce suffering. And then he moves into the period of his retirement when he began working pro bono in Ukraine and Nepal. It wouldn't be one of my nonfiction halls without some really grim sounding nonfiction. So I also picked up Morgue, A Life in Death. This book was written by a team of two people, a famous pathologist and also a crime writer. And in it, they look back on some famous cases of autopsies, exhumations, and their use in criminal proceedings. I was recommended this next book since apparently it's well known at this point how dark I like my nonfiction. That book is called The Buried Soul, How Humans Invented Death by Timothy Taylor. This book charts the history of the human response to death from prehistory to the present day, and it also claims to be an adventure into the sepulchral worlds. Now that is how you sell me a book. This next book seems to be the American response to The Butchering Art by Lindsay Fitzharris, which I read not too long ago and really enjoyed, but that book is is Dr. Muter's Marvels by Kristen O'Keefe Aptowitz. From reading the description of this book, it seems that Thomas Dent Muter revolutionized American surgery much in the same way that Joseph Lister did in his home country, although it does seem that Muter was a much more forceful presence than his Quaker counterparts. I really want to save this one for the next time I'm in Philadelphia so that I can read this book and then go visit the Muter Museum. The penultimate book in this science section of my nonfiction book haul is The Spark of Life, Electricity in the Human Body by Francis Ashcroft. This is a study of all the electrical signals constantly coursing through our bodies that we can credit for our thoughts, our movements, and the functioning of our organs. The blurb of this book claims that the discovery of these electrical signals at least partially inspired Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. So if you're looking for a good nonfiction matchup for Frankenstein, might I suggest this one. And on the topic of electricity, the very last book I'd like to show you in this science hall is Shocked, Adventures in Bringing Back the Recently Dead by David Kasseret. This is a history of resuscitation beginning in the 18th century all up to the present day with all of the modern ways that we bring back the newly deceased. So those are all of the science books that I've picked up over the past few months. I would love to hear from you if you've read any of these books, if you've heard of any of them, or if you would now like to read them after hearing me talk about them. You can put that or any other comments you may have in the comment section below, but you can also find me on a variety of different places on social media. The links to all of my profiles are linked in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in part three of the nonfiction haul, talking about all the animal and nature books, which will be coming next month. I will see you in the next video. Bye!